Hello and welcome fellow friends of digital art and those who want to join this very exclusive society. In this video I wanted to share just a few tips that I find to be useful for beginner to intermediate ZBrush users. These tips are basically some solutions for tiny pitfalls as well as helpful little shortcuts that I turned into best practices over the years of using ZBrush and hopefully these will help you out in your journey when using this wonderful kit of software. Now without any more lengthy introduction, let's jump right into it. I guess this is probably one of the most helpful tips I can give since I ran into this for a pretty long time until I discovered that there is a workaround for it. So whenever you've been sculpting with, let's say, the clay build-up brush or any kind of stronger brush in some tighter spaces, such as nostrils, ears, or similar spots that have a gap closely in between surfaces, or areas that have a thin surface in general, you might have encountered that you've sculpted for a bit and once you change perspective, you notice this fat chunk of polygonal mess on the backside of your surface. Fortunately, there is an option called Backface Masking, well hidden in the brush menu. So, in order to activate it, you want to open up the brush menu and go down to Auto Masking. In there is a button called Backface Mask, and once you activate it, voila! No more crazy poly lumps on the backside of the surface you're working on. However, you gotta be aware that your brush's behavior changes quite a bit, since it basically reduces your Z intensity in areas that are facing away from the camera. And that takes me to the next tip, the topological feature. It's to be found in the auto masking menu on the bottom next to where the backface option is located. It's actually quite similar in function to the backface masking option, but it behaves just a little different. So if you still want to maintain your brush's full functionality, you'll want to use the topological masking feature instead. Using this masking option is especially useful when sculpting fingers with a larger brush, since this option checks the topological distance on the surface of the model, instead of the distance in 3D space relating to your brush size. As standard, the Move Topological brush has this feature turned on by default. You can also use both masking features at the same time if necessary. I guess you all know that you can orbit around your model in ZBrush by simply dragging your pen somewhere next to your model in empty space. And yes, I said pen, since I don't know anyone who joined the ZBrush Mouse Users Club. I guess you also know that you can rotate by right-clicking directly on top of your model, which is super useful when sculpting details in close-up. Unfortunately, this right-click feature is really sensitive and oftentimes it'll open up the quick menu, which can be a bit annoying. Now guess what? You can deactivate this menu by simply heading up to Preferences, Interface, Navigation, and there is the option for Enable Right-Click Pop-Up. You can also disable right-click navigation if that's your preference here. By the way, the pop-up menu is still always available by tapping the spacebar. I've got used to this workflow super quickly and I'm still using it to this day. Since we're already talking about viewport navigation, here's two little tips for whenever you get stuck too close to your model. On the outer borders of your document, there is a frame for navigation. So if you don't use right-click navigation at all and you get stuck too close on your model, you can still left-drag your pen outside of this frame to orbit. An even easier method of reframing your active subtool is by just hitting the F key. Tapping F a second time will frame all of your subtools fitting into the viewport. ZBrush features a great way for comparing two versions of a model. Let's say you're unsure if it was a good choice to put a scar in your character's face and you want to compare both versions next to each other, or maybe just show it to your art director slash client quickly. By hitting Shift S, you can drop your active model on the canvas, leaving a 2D copy of it while still being able to move your model around and, for instance, place it next to the dropped one for a comparison. You could even use ZBrush's 2D brushes by leaving Edit Mode for a quick 2D edits if that's something you're into. If you want to get rid of the mess on the canvas you left behind, simply hit Ctrl or, if you're on a Mac, Command N to start fresh. Super pro tip, you can hide your interface by hitting the Tab key. It's useful in combination with the spacebar pop-up menu when you want to fully focus on sculpting. You don't have to start working in ZBrush with the default background gradient on the canvas all the time. 
Once you've set up the background color to your liking, you can head up to document and simply click save as startup document. The same applies to standard material as well. So if you don't like the waxy red map tab, just switch to your favorite material and go up to material and click on save as startup material. The next time you fire up ZBrush, it'll load your default background. All right, folks, that's it already. As I've mentioned in the beginning, these tips are aimed more towards beginner and intermediate ZBrush users. But anyways, I hope you found these tips to be helpful. Thanks for watching and until next time.